it's your girl Ash, and I am back back with another video. And today we are going down history lane. I'm super duper duper excited because I love oversimplified, and I'm going to be reacting to the War of the Bucket. I've never heard of this war. It sounds interesting, and I already know that it's going to be funny because that's just what oversimplified does. They make you laugh, but you also learn at the same time. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys have ever heard of the War of the Bucket before Oversimplified or anyone has ever done a video on YouTube. Comment down below and be honest with me and let me know if you guys have um, if you guys ever heard of this war. Enough of me talking, y'all. Let's get straight into this reaction. Hey. You. Yeah. Me? You. New merch available now, including a supremely <laughs> uncool t-shirt and a glorious new character pin. Link in the description down below. All right, folks, gather around. I've got some good news and some bad news. Did you say good news and glad news? No. I said good news glad and news. bad news. Very bad news. Word on the street is there's going to be a horrible plague coming in from Central Asia in the next couple decades that'll wipe out half of Europe. What's the good news? Do you have a cure? Please say you have a cure. <laughs> no. Even better. The good news is we've got a new bucket for this city well. What? <laughs> a bucket? To understand the War of the Bucket, we first need to talk about this guy. He's the man with the plant, the host with the most. He's holy, lowly, he eats ravioli with the white cassock, matching pellegrina, and the most tasteful of fringed fascias. Come on, you all know who I'm talking about. It's the Pope, the head of the largest religious organization in the world. Mm -hmm. But what if I told you he I wasn't always the big bad boy powerhouse he's often thought as today? That's right, throughout history, the papacy often found itself forced to wrestle against adversity and opposition to retain its authority. The earliest popes, for example, suffered under the brutal persecution of the Roman Empire, and many ended up martyred, such as Pope Clement I, who was ostensibly thrown into the sea with an anchor around his neck. Oh, On the wow. bright side, however, he's now the patron saint of fishermen. After persecution finally ended, the Pope still found himself being heavily controlled by secular kings and nobility. For over two centuries, the Byzantine Emperor basically decided who could become Pope. Then came a real low point, during what has been called the Dark Age, the dark a period age. where noblewomen controlled the Pope through, how should I put this, feminine charm. It was around here that one infamous Pope, John XII, took office. This bad boy would hold, how should I put this, naughty no clothes parties in the Lateran Palace. And apparently, this would even happen. Come on, Zeus, give me a six. Duh. Did I say Zeus? I meant Thor. Ra, the Egyptian <laughs> sun god? Dang it, who is it we worship? Perhaps you should read this, your holiness. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth? Wow, this is wild. Pope John XII eventually died exactly how he lived, caught in the act by an irate husband who picked the Pope up and chucked him out the window. What? The point I'm trying to make here is... <laughs> Oversimplified. Oh my gosh that often the Pope was a very weak and corruptible figure and was regularly used and controlled by There's secular leaders as a tool weak. to increase their own power and influence. And there was certainly an element of that in the year 800, when the Pope and the Kingdom of the Franks were good BFFs, and King of the Franks, Charlemagne, was like, hey man, being King of the Franks is nice and all, but I want more legitimacy and also to become the continuation of the Roman Empire. So what say in return for my protection, you crown me Emperor so everyone will respect me more? Sure thing, pal. We'll hold the ceremony tomorrow. Charlemagne, King of the Franks, I hereby crown you Emperor of the West. Oh. Oh my goodness. I I was not expecting this at all. <laughs> what a surprise. I simply cannot accept. Oh. Okay, then. I guess I'll just put this back over here. Give me that crown. <laughs> Charlemagne's crowning as emperor was certainly an historic moment, but it also created a bit of an interesting problem. It set the precedent that from like here out, only the Pope could crown an emperor. But the Pope was also very much under the influence and control of Charlemagne. So who really held the power here? The Pope or the Emperor? I'm sure that this Pope, conflict right? won't cause anyone to die. Bishop of Freising, we want to thank you once again for visiting our wonderful city. It's been an honor. The pleasure is all mine. And what a wonderful tour it's been. I've seen the city walls. I've seen the towers. Nothing could top that. Oh, couldn't it? Because we've saved the best for last. Ta-da! 
Ah, yes, that's very interesting. Isn't it the greatest thing you've ever seen? Well, I mean, it is just a bucket. <laughs> Get him out of here! <laughs> oh my Over gosh! Time, Charlemagne's position as emperor and the kingdom of the Franks gradually evolved into the Holy Roman Empire. And by now, the Pope and the Emperor weren't such good friends anymore. Since nice So the bucket is supposed to be like some type of souvenir. Neither could agree on who was the boss of who. To make matters worse, the Emperor had taken to investing his own bishops and abbots. What does that mean? Well, allow me to explain. The problem for the Holy Roman Emperor was his empire wasn't really an empire so much as a nightmarish federation made up of hundreds of counties, duchies, bishoprics, and more. The Ooh. princes in charge of these local regions often didn't give the Emperor their loyalty. The German nobility spent a lot of their time rebelling against the Emperor, and the Emperor spent a lot of his time trying to put down those rebellions. Can we get rid of them? Who? All the nobility. Get rid of them and pick new ones who are loyal to me. You can't just remove noble families from their territory. Please. Aw, okay, how about this? Some of those territories are ruled by bishops and abbots. And as holy Roman emperor, considered by many to be the deputy of Jesus Christ himself, perhaps you can choose who gets to become bishop and abbot. Yay! Now it's time to turn out the lights and go to sleep. Okay, I love you. Uh, okay, good night. Say it back. And so it was. The emperor Say invested his back. own family and loyal followers into powerful church positions and thereby was able to increase his own power and authority. Not only that, but the emperor and other nobility were also engaging in something called simony. That's when someone Simon. would come along and say, hey, I want to become a bishop and get all the personal riches that come with the position. Perhaps we could come to some kind of arrangement. That's right. Church positions were actually being sold to the highest bidder. What? Instead of having instead of having a vote, they basically paid their way. Mm -mm. And let me tell Corruption. you, they probably didn't come cheap. It's gonna cost you a lot more than this. I don't think so. I've got a promo code. And speaking of promo codes, <laughs> do you like free money? <laughs> I know I do. Sponsor I really time. Like it. And that's why I use Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online. For free. This means you always get the best deals without like even the trying king on of over 20,000 sites like Amazon, eBay, ASOS, and more. For example, here I am buying seven pizzas after a long day of animating. It's currently costing me $130. Oh, hello, honey. You have a voucher for me, you say? All I have to do is do you guys like myself. Domino's? Nice. I saved thirty-one dollars seventy-eight cents. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys click. like Domino's. There is absolutely no reason not to the use honey for tasty, everything you buy online. But it's free and literally takes two clicks to install. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com/oversimplified. Honey. That's joinhoney.com/oversimplified. Honey, honey. <laughs> and as always, by using my links, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now where were we? Oh yeah. Investing Corruption. bishops and abbots, selling church positions, authority, and power. Wait a minute. This is depravity. The purpose of the church isn't for him to increase his own authority and power. It's for me to increase my own authority and power. What about Jesus, your holiness? What? I thought the purpose of the church was to spread the good message of Jesus Christ. How drunk are you? Very. <laughs> All right. The results for the election of chief magistrate are in. Giovanni Cablami, 1%. Spaghetti Jeff, 2%. And the bucket, 1 trillion percent. Around the year 1050, a series of reformist popes came along, and they said enough was enough. They wanted to stop the emperor from abusing the church and investing his own church officials. How are you going to stop me so long as I have control over who becomes pope? Remember the circular power division? If you try to stop me, I'll just oppose you and pick someone else. Oh no, I've contracted tuberculosis. And just like that, the emperor was dead. His oh my gosh. All of the leaders back then were like dropping like flies from some type of disease. Whew. Six-year-old son, Henry IV, took over. And as we all know, child emperors equal opportunity. The church had an opening to take back control of the papacy. Hey, man. I hope you don't mind, but we're changing the rules so that only the church cardinals can elect the pope, and you no longer have any say in the matter. You know, if that's cool with you. 
I peed my pants. Okay, great talk. And then, with the position of the Pope a little more secure, he held a big meeting where he drew up a big list of all the reforms and new powers he was giving himself. And it included some pretty gnarly stuff. Okay, first, I have the power to depose emperors. Everyone cool with that? Yeah. Um, let's see. Only I can depose or reinstate bishops. Yeah? All right. No one can judge me. Uh, old princes shall only kiss my feet. Only my name shall be spoken in the churches. My name is the only name in the world. Okay, I think you're done. These were all some pretty radical powers the Pope was giving himself. And with these reforms, the Pope was basically telling the Emperor, you no longer have the right to choose your own bishops and abbots. Only I can do that. When the Emperor, now a full-grown man, heard the news, he was furious. What? This is madness! Who does this guy think he is? I'm the Emperor, for goodness sake. He can't tell me what to do. I'll invest my own bishops and abbots if I want to, and this rapscallion can go right to heck! I peed my pants again! The whole oh conflict gosh. escalated when Henry IV went to the Pope and said, Hey, guess what, sucker? You're deposed. Oh. Wait a minute. I'm the Pope. You can't depose me. You're deposed. Oh. Wait a minute. I'm the emperor. Wait, but you the can't Pope depose does me. Have more power, You're right? deposed. Oh. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Eventually, the German princes took advantage of the situation and they all turned against Henry. Henry was forced to apologize to the Pope and the whole thing ended there. Except it didn't. The whole conflict, known today as the investiture controversy, would continue on for centuries as popes and emperors engaged in a power struggle over the emperor choosing his own church officials. The overall result of this conflict is very intricate and full of complexities, but in general, the pope was able to increase his authority. Great news, your holiness. Your influence is on the rise throughout civilized Europe, except for this one city in northern Italy. Really? What's going on there? Unca, unca. As for the Emperor, he found his realm thrown into further chaos and civil war, as the local princes continued to increase their own power and independence. This was most notably the case in northern Italy. Separated from the rest of the Holy Roman Empire by the Alps, the Emperor's influence and control over Italy had often been questionable. In the current chaos, these Italian city-states began operating almost entirely independently. Their practical independence was further solidified when Emperor Frederick Barbarossa came down in 1176 to try to reassert his control. The cities formed an alliance, and with the Pope's support, they kicked the Emperor right back to Germany. Hooray, said the Italian city-states. We did it. We're the best of friends. And then they immediately began attacking each other. Why? Well, this whole Pope versus Emperor thing, in Italy at least, had infiltrated out. society to its very core. Across Italy, families and cities were torn between two opposing sides. On one uh. side, the Guelphs, who supported the Pope's cause. On the other, the so Ghibli, who supported the Emperor. These two sides struggled for control as Guelph cities battled against Ghibli ones. As usual, personal interest played a pretty big role as pro-pope Guelph cities tended to be rich mercantile ones who didn't like the emperor's they taxes. Just stole the money. Emperors supporting Ghibellines, on the other hand, were often agricultural, where the expanding papal states were a larger threat. These cities would sometimes even switch sides depending who was in charge and their ever-changing personal interests. In some cities, brutal fighting broke out in oh the streets gosh. as opposing families fought for control. At times, it's the conflict became butt. so tribal that the differences between the two sides were just downright silly. My love, I can't bear it. We must be together. But how can we? My Ghibelline family wears feathers on the left side of their caps, and your Guelph family wears them on the right. My Ghibelline family cuts fruit straight down, and your Guelph family cuts fruit crosswise. These are arbitrary differences. We shouldn't let them tear us apart. We can be together no matter what our families think. Wonderful news. Let's make a toast to our love. I'll drink from my Ghibelline smooth goblet, and I shall drink from my Guelph chaste goblet. Get out of my sight, you <laughs> dirty Pope-loving wench. Two city-states in particular that got caught in a long-standing rivalry was the Emperor supporting Modena and the Pope supporting, bucket-loving, Bologna. These two cities had bad blood between that them as they had bucket. already fought against each other on a number of occasions. In 1249, the two sides took part in the Battle of Fasolta, after which the victorious Bolognese launched a live donkey into Modena to humiliate them. For decades after that, the two sides would occasionally take little day trips into each other's territory and mess things about a bit. 
In the fateful year of 1325, the Bolognese went on one such trip and laid waste to some farmlands. The ruler of Medena, Passerina de Bonacolsi, was having none of it. The Bolognese had two major forts protecting their city in the southwest, so Passerino, in retaliation, decided to take an army down and lay siege to one of them. Hey, you dirty Bolognese jerks! You think you can raid our farmlands? Come out here and face me like a man! Hey man, what's up? I've just come out to let you know that there's no need to siege us because- Whoa! <laughs> hey man, chill out! I'm trying to tell you- Whoa! Stop doing that! I'm trying to tell you I'm actually secretly sympathetic to the Imperial cause and I want to willingly hand the fort over to you! Oh, cool. Okay. Dude, what was that for? For betraying your people. And this is for joining mine. Mwah. The Bolognese oh were pretty God. unhappy to lose one of their main defensive forts, but to make matters worse, then this happened. Hey, wait a minute. Where's the bucket? Oh no, it's gone. Those modern knees must have taken it. We'll make them pay. This is unacceptable. They may take our lives. They may take our fort, but they will never take our bucket. Oh wait, here it is. I found it, guys. It's right here. Phew. Could you imagine if we started a war over that? That would have been really stupid. And there'd probably be a billion videos about it on YouTube one day. Thank goodness it never actually happened. That's right. The famous story you may know about the War of the Bucket, that the war started because Modena stole Bologna's bucket, doesn't actually seem to be quite right. I was surprised to find that the bucket was likely not actually stolen at the start of the war. And at this point, I want to thank and give a big shout out to fellow history YouTuber M. Laser. He's the one guy I found who actually translated a fantastic original Italian source and then kindly allowed me to use his work in my own research. He does really well researched and in-depth videos and definitely deserves way more subscribers, so please head on over and check him out. The real reason Bologna seems to have declared war on Modena is simply that they both hated each other, supported opposing factions, the Pope had hold on Guelph cities to attack Passerino, and Bologna wanted its fort back. And they were gonna get it back. Bologna had a large force, much larger than what Modena could muster up. So they felt pretty confident. They sent half their force to lay siege and take back the fort. And the other half took defensive positions Ooh, to prevent Bologna, the Modenese indeed. from crossing the river. The smaller Modenese force were struggling to find a place to cross. So one night they were like, hey guys, look out. We're attacking way up here in the north. Better move your troops. Oh, would you look at that? That was easy. And just like that, the Modernese were across the river. Oh, the Bolognese wow. were probably expecting the Modernese to come and break their siege. But instead, the Modernese went for the second fort at Zappolino. Bologna couldn't afford to lose both of its defensive forts. So the entire Bolognese force moved to take defensive positions at Zappolino. When the Modernese arrived, it was already late in the day. And there were about two hours of sunlight left. In most medieval battles, at this point, both sides would set up a camp, rest for the night, so and prepare drinking. for battle the next day. But the outnumbered Modernese decided the only way to win was to deal a quick, decisive blow while the Bolognese were still unorganized and unprepared. And that's exactly what they did. They charged at the Bolognese line, and the two sides engaged in fierce combat. Then the sneaky Modernese pulled what must be the most predictable, yet somehow consistently surprising move in medieval warfare. They sent the cavalry around the side and hit him from behind. Wow. Bing, bang, bang. The Bolognese went on the run. With casualties in the thousands, Modena had won. And the Modernese cavalry chased the Bolognese cavalry all the way back to the city. After Medena's victory, they went on a tour of the Bolognese countryside, burning some stuff down along the way. When they reached the city itself, instead of laying siege, they set up a camp and basically held a massive party for three days. The defeated Bolognese could only sit back and watch. As the Modernese force began packing up and getting ready to leave, they noticed something. Oh my gosh. Hey, the bucket. check this out. No way. Are you kidding me? They're still using traditional wells. Hey, you dumb Bolognese. Ever heard of an artesian well? You can't even get water out of the ground without using a stupid bucket. It's not a stupid bucket. It's a wonderful bucket. Yeah, whatever, bucket boy. <laughs> We're taking this with us. So Medena stole Bologna's bucket and put it up on display in their cathedral, eventually moving it to the city hall where it remains on display to this day. The two cities came to a peace settlement a few months later. Bologna would have to pay heavy war reparations, and in exchange, Medena would return all conquered territories. Medena kept the bucket. Despite being one of the bloodiest battles in medieval Italian history, it didn't really change anything, except now Medena had Bologna's bucket. As for the larger power struggle between the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor, that would continue on for some time and played a part in many major events of medieval history, such as the Crusades, the Protestant Reformation, eventually leading to the general separation of church and state we see in Europe today. So there you have it. We learned about the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor, the investiture controversy, and finally, 
the war of the bucket. It's been a long day, and it's time to turn out the lights and go to sleep. Okay, I love you. Um, okay. Good night. <laughs> uh, okay. Say it. Back. It's just a bucket. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is hilarious. Goodness gracious. It's the bucket. Really? Could have just gave them back the bucket. This was definitely hilarious. Comment down below. Let me know what other reactions you guys would like to see. And I got you. Yes, I do. Let's have some fun. I'm going to be uploading two to three times a day. Period. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know of some other reactions you guys would like to see. Don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, fam.